Why hello there, Anxious Cynic here, continuing our beginner's guide series in the newest version of Minimator 1.1.2 as of this tutorial. And uh, let me select the window there. Today we're going to be talking about how to import scenery for your Minecraft animation. So there's a couple of ways to do this. And the first thing we're going to focus on is if you have a Minecraft install on your computer, then all you're going to do is go over here to the workbench. You're going to go to this option here, which is create a piece of Minecraft terrain from a world or schematic file. Now a schematic file is a schematic that's been made from a Minecraft world that you can import into your scene. But we're going to focus on importing from a world itself. So we're just going to click on this and we're going to go right here to to scenery we want to bring in a piece of scenery so we're going to click on that we're going to go to import from world you can go to browse if you're going to import a schematic but we don't have one for this tutorial so we're just going to stick with this option so I'm going to click on that and then you'll get this dialog box up here and this is where we're going to select our world so right here this will find it in the actual Minecraft world saves folder if you have it installed otherwise you'll have to browse if you have it somewhere else but we'll cover that in a moment for now i'm just going to go ahead and select this world here that i have and then we get the world loaded into the world importer so all i have to do right here is zoom in and out with my mouse wheel to see more of the scenery or less if i want to this is your top down view this is your side view and this bounding box if i left click and drag will be what is imported whatever you put in this little box here and over here in the side view, whether it's tall or short or deep or shallow, whatever, uh, that's what it'll import is whatever is contained in this box here. And as you can see, I can zoom in and out on this view as well, though it's not quite as, uh, you know, it's a little bit clunky. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and try to import this little village right here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that over there. We're going to come over here and zoom out and I'm just going to drag this box in just slightly just trying to get exactly what we need. I'm going to drag it up there. Let me zoom in a little bit. Another thing to note here is if I click in with my mouse wheel, I can drag this around. I think you can also do the same if you right click. So uh, yeah, that's how you can navigate the interface a little bit. And uh, what we're going to do here is just drag this up to make sure we don't cut off the tops of anything. And typically what you want to do when you're importing scenery is get as few blocks as possible because you don't want there to be unnecessary blocks slowing down Minimator and taxing your computer more than you would want it to. So what we're going to do is just try to make this as shallow as possible. We don't want to get any unnecessary blocks importing into the scene that we're not actually going to see in the animation. To go even further with that, we can come down here to filters. If I click on that, then you'll get another dialog box this may not be activated by default but if you click on that it'll activate and then what you can do is click on this drop down box or you can just begin typing here so if I want stone I can just start sto and it'll just kind of you know fill it in for you otherwise you can search here like this and uh, let's say we don't want stone so I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click add and you'll see it puts it down here in this box. And basically what that means with the default option, remove filtered, it's going to not import any stone blocks. So that way, if you have a scene where you have certain types of blocks that you know are going to get imported, but you're not ever going to see them in the scene, then you can filter them out so they don't actually get imported. And then you won't have Minimator trying to keep up with all those blocks that you're not actually using or going to see in your animation. You have this keep filtered option here. I honestly have not tried that, but I assume what it might do is only import the stone and nothing else. We're not gonna experiment with that right now, but uh, that's probably what that does. Don't hold me to it, don't take my word for it. So I don't wanna do this though, so I'm gonna click on the stone here and I'm gonna click remove, and uh, we're just gonna leave that alone. But that's how you can do that if you want to. I'm pretty happy with the selection that we have here. So what I'm gonna do is just click done, but first, Note that you have the overworld, nether, and end up here. If you wanted to import from another realm in Minecraft, then you could select these. I don't know if I have any of those realms loaded on this world, so it may not change for me. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that may have been the case. So it kind of screwed me up there. Anyway, we're just going to go ahead and reselect this real quick. Just like it so. It doesn't really matter. It ain't that big of a deal, man. There we go. So now we're just going to click done. And then right here, you'll get this dialog box that says 33 blocks were found in the terrain that can be animated. And basically what that is, that's doors, that's chests, levers, anything in Minecraft that actually moves can now be imported to be animatable in Minimator. If you don't want that for some reason, just click no. But if you do want to be able to animate those things, which I imagine you typically would, we're going to click yes. But do note that if there's a bunch of those in your scene and your scenery is very large, it could actually slow down Minimator. So it depends on what kind of computer you're running and how big your scene is. 
So we're just going to click on yes. It's going to import our scenery. You'll see our little schematic there now shows up. I'm just left clicking and dragging so you can orbit around it and look at it there. And uh, you can also change the texture here if you have a texture pack. That's something we may get into later. But for now, we're good with all the default stuff. We're going to click create. And then now we're going to zoom out. I'm actually zooming in and out with my mouse wheel. I think I forgot to cover that in last in the last tutorial so i apologize for that but that's all that is just zooming in and out by scrolling on the mouse wheel so as you can see here we've got our dang old scenery we got our terrain we got everything in and since we left that option and we told it yes then you can click on the door here if i can click on the, the scenery there we go and you'll see now that this is an animatable door if we had told that no then this would just be a block and it would select with the rest of the scenery just like uh, everything else does that's not movable. That is the scenery that we imported. It's a beautiful little village and it's good to go. But let's say that we imported this and then we later decided this isn't where I want my scene to take place. I want it from my other world. Well, you don't have to go up here and import a whole new piece of scenery. What we can do is, let me go ahead and deselect that by clicking away from it. We can go over here to our library. I'm gonna click on that. And then you'll see here that our piece of animation scenery is right there. I'm just dragging these little uh, fields around. Anyway, so it's selected. And with this selected, we can go down here and you see scenery and it's set to the piece of scenery that we have, of course. So I can click on this and I can go to import from world again. And what this will do is actually replace this scenery file within our scene. So we don't actually have to import a whole nother piece of scenery and finagle with all these things. We can actually just replace this one. So I'm gonna go to a world save that I have from our community server. I'm just gonna click on browse and go to where that world save is and then we'll import it. So here we are in my Minimator schematics folder. This is where I saved the world save for our community server. And I'm just going to go ahead and open this folder. And then we have level.dat. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click open. And fortunately, we got this error. I don't know exactly why this is taking place. I may have to ask David or Nimi about it, but this happened. And uh, basically, it may just be due to the fact that it's a multiplayer server or something. I honestly don't know. But in order to go ahead and continue illustrating our point, I'll just find another save that's from my Minecraft save folder and we'll show how this will replace it in the scene. Apologies for the technical difficulties there, but these things may happen. Uh, you know, this is something that you may run into yourself. Right now I have no solutions, but uh, maybe later on we can chime in in the comments and, and figure this out together. Anyway, I'm going to hit quit. And I'm just gonna go and repeat that process and find the world save that I want by browsing. Instead of using the option here, whoops, sorry about that. Uh, instead of using this option here, I'm actually just gonna browse and use the same method to find that world save and then we'll bring it in just like I talked about. So as you can see here, this is my world save folder. And all I'm gonna do is just go to, uh, let's just say uh, this one here. We're gonna click level.dat, we're gonna click open. And there you go, this is actually like a, a flat world that we have here. Let me just drag this in over here and we're gonna click done. We're gonna bring that in. And as you can see, our terrain just changed to this much less appealing looking uh, thing here. So that's how you can import scenery from levels that you downloaded as long as they'll work and not give you an error. And how you can import it just from using your own Minecraft world save folders. If you don't have any of that going for you or you just for some reason want to customize your scenery, you can actually build scenery right here in Minimator from scratch with no need for Minecraft or Minecraft world save whatsoever. I have a tutorial on that already and I will try to link it in the cards at the end of this video. So if you'd like to know how to do that, stick around and check out that video. But for now, I think we're done. Hopefully that covered most of the basics that you would need to know to get started in Minimator. Hope this tutorial was helpful. Hope you liked it. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, comment and subscribe to become a citizen today. Share it with your friends and your family and your pets and I will see you guys in the next part.